little ditty about Donnie and Marcos, two of my new friends here at the Wealth Snowball. Wanted to take a look at Donnie's comment and Marcos' comment right here. Donnie says, with EOG, you went from a monthly expiration, May 19th, you know, which means the third week of the month, a lot of the stock options only trade monthly and they expire on the third Friday of each month. So that is considered a monthly expiration to a weekly expiration, May 25th. Yeah, I was a bit shocked at what the premium was for those dates. And he says, check out the strike price for June 16th, which is a monthly. Those are all are all sort of wacky. So I will do that. In fact, the EOG, I tried to roll two of them. The other one didn't go through, so I canceled it. So it's still on the board and I need to roll it. It's the strike I have set at 111. I'd love to roll that to that 113 as I tried to do earlier. And then Marco says, your trading videos are awesome and entertaining. Thank you so much from that. I truly mean it from the bottom of my heart. Words like that keep me keep me going because I got a bit of a thin skin and I don't want anybody to not like me. So I'm trying to be, as you are saying here, entertaining and on occasion, maybe even instructional. So is it possible to throw some instructional videos together as well? Yes. Don't change it from what you're doing. Just a few videos to give instructions on how to do them. I'm going to definitely try to do so. And Marcos is saying rolling options, still trying to figure that out. I looked at other fig videos, but your delivery seems to get better. So let's try to do, what do they call that? Two birds, one stone. You know what? In fact, let's, um, let's respond to both right now. And just as a, can you type at the same time as I talk? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> uh. See, I can't. <laughs> hey, Donnie, I'm actually reading your comment in a video right now. LOL, as people like to say. And we will reply. And then, you know what? We like to do this you know, click on the old like and the love because, you know, those art do de do algorithms for YouTube pick up on all of these things, the likes, the views, the comments, the likes and loves of the comments, all of those things are involved in the algorithm, which I need a little bit more of from time to time to get this party started. So, so hi, Marcos. Thank you very much for your words. Amen lot to me. They really do. Definitely. How do you spell definitely? I can't see my spelling behind that <laughs> emoji. I'm going to definitely create some instructional videos in the near future. I really am. In fact, I keep waiting on Elon to contact me to tell me that my Starlink satellite system is ready because once I have some legit internet out here in the farm fields, I might actually create some legit videos because <laughs> right now I have a little hack that I use that I was able to figure out with this Vidyard. This is a browser extension and in fact, it's free. I have the paid version because the free one, I think they, I don't know, they allow like 10 videos or whatever for free, but obviously I've done way more than 10 videos. But what happens is, is when I record them and then I click stop down here, they essentially upload them to YouTube for me. So it's their internet that does the work instead of me taking hours to upload a video because my upload speed here is trash. In fact, I'll even show you. Uh, let's see, internet speed test. Let's try it right here and right now. Run your speed test. You know, my download speed isn't too bad. And you're probably laughing because you probably have like a 100 megabits per second download speed. But for the farm fields, that's not a bad download speed. Hey, wait, that uploads higher than normal. <laughs> Typically that uploads like under five up. Oh, here it comes coming back down. Wah, wah, wah. So see that upload speed is really bad when it comes to uploading video content on the YouTube. So I like this little hack, this little workaround in order to be able to create videos in a in abundance because I love to do these trades live. I like to 
try to, well, I try to talk out loud in a um, coherent manner. It doesn't always work out, but I do try that. And once I have some legit internet, then I'm going to create all kinds of crazy videos I have in store or in mind. In fact, hey, little side note, maybe we'll make another play on the spy right now for tomorrow. I'll put another one on the board for tomorrow. Let's just take a look at what the premium says because tomorrow we're at 416, 418 on our current trade, right? So let's look at the same idea. Another call credit spread expiring tomorrow, April 13th, one day away. There's our there's our contracts on the board, five on the 416 selling of the call. We bought five of the 418 and that was at 14 and four. Mm -hmm. You know what? I'm just going to leave those on the board. We're going to leave them on the board. Yes, we'll leave those there and not add to that position at this time. Let's take a look at that EOG 111. There it is here. So Mark or Marcos wants to discuss or have an instructional video regarding rolling options. So I'm going to create one specifically for that. But for now, I'll just try to give you you know, come my best thoughts on rolling options and why it's done and how it's done. So on, on Robinhood, on this platform that not a lot of people like, I like it a lot. One, it pays me 4.4% on my money in sitting in my settlement account. So if we go back here, I'll show you that number. So where is it at? It's here somewhere. There it is. So $437,000 is currently collecting 4.4% interest. That's pretty good because I was just checking today. Is this it? No, that's a different thing I was checking. I was checking TD Ameritrade today and I think I have the message right here on my phone from them. And they said that they pay, they pay me. Hold on, drum roll please. This is where I would, if I was making legit videos, I would edit that out. Me trying to think out loud. If I scroll through my message, I had a back and forth with TD Ameritrade today, and they say they pay they pay 0.35% <laughs> on the money that would be sitting around like this, and that's 4.4% over on the Robinhood, and they charge between 11.5 and 14.25% interest on their margin accounts and Robinhood charges me 7.5. I have yet to use any margin, but I do plan on doing it in the future, probably the not too distant future. So the other point I was trying to make is that Robinhood makes it very simple to roll options. Unlike I do some trading also, I have two accounts. I have two accounts with Vanguard, a brokerage account and a retirement account. And I trade options in both of those. And it's much more difficult to trade those options in Vanguard. In fact, they don't have a button to roll options. You have to buy to close and then sell to open, which is basically, you know, a roll. It's the same, the same thing, but Robinhood makes it simple to do in one fell swoop. So here's the idea. I have this trade on the board. Okay. It's a 111 call on EOG resources, and it was created on March 15th. So on March 15th, I sold this covered call that expires April 21st, okay? So it was five weeks out from the time I traded it. And when I did it, when I did it, where, where, where is my, it's not showing me my history on this. What is that? Of course, it would glitch right when I'm trying to explain or show how much I collected. But I collected a, a, a lot of money. <laughs> I collected a lot of dollar bills to trade that 111 call because it wasn't too far at all out of the money from when I bought it. So the closer in the money that you sell a call, the higher the premium you're going to collect. So I collected that high premium and also locked in the dividend. So if we go to EOG, maybe this is a better way to look at it. So I had uh, collected, I collected uh, like a hundred bucks, right? And a dividend. Show more history. Sorry for all the boringness going on right now. I've got a, am I confusing myself? There it is. 
See, I can't even scroll and read at the same time. There is the dividend that I created. Now that was on 100 shares, okay? And that was their special dividend. So we collected that and then you can see the two different times that I bought shares. So I bought at 110.39, 100 shares at 110.39. And then I turned around, I turned right around, turn around. Every now and then you got a trade a covered call and then you do it just a little bit out. I did that just a little bit out. It was like an automatic wheel move. So I bought at 110.39. I sold the option contract at 111. So it wasn't much of a move, right? It wasn't a much of a move up and I collected a bunch of premium and I'm hoping I can find that premium for you. Is it in here somewhere? Is it in here? Bright eyes. Your singing is not improving. It really isn't. All right. I'll have to get the old spreadsheet out and show you that. But the idea of this current role, okay, the idea of what we're going to do right before our very eyes is that we're going to buy this contract closed and sell a new open in one trading ticket. So in one fell swoop, essentially, we're going to make this trade. And the reason we're going to do it is to collect more premium. So we're going to get more premium right now. And we're going to also trade this one 11 strike into a about a I'm looking at a 113 which would create another two dollars in profit per share if they are exercised and now why would you do that Bart if it's trading at 122 why wouldn't you just try to trade it out into the future at what the stock is currently trading now because I do want to create premium now because if we look to buy it closed it's a big number it's going to cost over you know it's an approximate cost, max cost of $1,180 to buy that contract back, okay, in order to basically cancel it. Well, I want to do both at the same time, buy it closed and sell a new open in order to collect premium and hopefully correct collect a bigger strike price. So let's look at the date that Donnie was talking about. So here's what we have, we can click right into a button that says roll this position because we are on that particular trade. We are on the trade. We're not on the stock. If we clicked on this link, that would go to the stock. But we are on this call trade that expires April 21st. And there it is. Current position, 111 call, 421 expiration. And this move is to buy that close. And it's saying that the debit for doing so is $1,165, $1,165 a share times 100 shares. Now, if we go out to that June 16th, so you could see where it, once it gets a little bit out in time, then they don't have their weekly options up yet. So it, you can see it goes from May 26th, and then it jumps to the third week of June, which is that monthly trade that Donnie was talking about. So if we look at that premium and we scroll down to that 113, turn around, we don't have a 113, but we do have a 112.50 at 1365. So if we run math on that, now again, the days out is going to be, so it's uh, from March or from April 21st to June 16th. Okay. So that is Nine plus 31 is 40 plus 16. That's 56 days out. Now, of course, I have to make a note of that. 56 days because that's how our math is going to work. We're already locked into this position. So we're adding 56 days to this trade. And what would it look like if we went with this number here? Okay. We would be at a $205 credit approximately, plus we would add $1.50 to our 100 shares. So we would create a $150 premium or $150 share appreciation plus 205 on the new position premium, okay? So that's $355. And then we divide it by our um, investment. Now that, that our Initial investment cost basis was 10606. That's the number we're using, okay, just for fun. 3.3% 3 
return in that time frame, but we need to divide it by the 56 days that we're adding to the trade and then multiply it by 365. And that equals 21.8% annualized. Okay. So 21.8% annualized. And the reason is, is this different than what we were looking at before is because it's that many more days out. So your investment is locked in throughout that time period, unless of course you roll it again. So look, let's go back to this May 26th, which would be 26 plus nine, 35 days out, right? So it'd be 35 days out and we would be going to a 113. So it, probably part of what Donnie was pointing out was why in, why in the world wouldn't there be tighter tighter strike prices on the monthlies, which should always have higher trading volume. That's easily what he could mean by that. But if we looked at the 113, okay, we'd be at a $45 credit and we would add $200 to our position, okay? Let's do that math annualized just to see what the difference is. So that's 21.8 at the June monthly expiration date. Let's look at the May weekly expiration date based on this roll here. So we would add $200 share appreciation. And we would then also add $50 in premium 250 divided by that cost basis investment of $10,606, 2.3%. And then we would divide it by the 35 days that we would be adding to the current trade and then multiplying it by the 365 to annualize it, which would be 24.5. So at this very moment, I'm going to stick with the 24.5 because it's a shorter time frame. And yes, it is less money overall, but you know what? When we get closer to it, we could roll it again if we want, because there is a strategy that is the in the money roll, covered call roll, that is a strategy. I haven't looked into it too much, but I did read about it just a little, because that is where you can continue. I mean, if you have a stock that keeps going up or goes sideways from an already up number, you can keep collecting premium indefinitely by rolling these positions. So of course, we also know that EOG is going to be paying another dividend. Is that correct? Brown, bright eyes, checking on that dividend here. Oh, dividend history, click through. And we see the dates we're looking. Yep, we're looking. So on the 13th, we'll lock in this 82.5 cents per share dividend, which would be $82.50 for that 100 shares that we're dealing with in this particular option roll. And we're rolling out the barrel. We're looking at, can we get it filled at 55? Hmm? Covered call roll to $113 strike from 111 out 35 days from the existing contract, the current position, low likelihood of filling. Yeah, see, what about that 50 bucks? Put that in my pocket. Let's see. It's still saying low. How low can you go? Can you go down low? What about 45? Do I hear 45? dollar bills and that's going to change our math it will change our math it doesn't seem like it's going to fill at this very moment oh there it is so that changed our math and what did it change it to so now we go 245 right 245 divided by 10,606 and then divided by carry the one divided by the 35 days Applied by the 365, and we get 24%. So it didn't go down much. It went down half a percent annualized, but it's a faster turn on our money than the third week in June. So we don't mind or we don't really, we like EOG, but if we lose it, if it's called away, if we let it ride and we let those shares be called away, we've collected another round of dividend. We've collected a little bit more premium, and we've collected a couple hundred dollars more in our share appreciation. So we good with it. We are good with it. And this video is getting super long because of all your babbling. It's like we're in the money for tomorrow or $15 in the money right now. And the profit on that trade that expires tomorrow, tomorrow. And I have a meeting at three o'clock. I haven't showered yet. So this may be the last. Oh, don't make it the last. I still wanted to look at 
Amazon and Blackstone. So I'm going to get out of this video and get right into a new one. And I'll see you in that video. We're going to look at Amazon and Blackstone possibly selling some puts before I have to get into the shower and get off to my appointment. See you in the next video.